we're launching into the consolidated study guide portion of this where we're going to go over limits as well as a bunch of other things. So starting off, our NP limits, we have a 12 second transient of 105 to 107, a transient of 101 to 105, a continuous of 95 to 101, another transient at 91 to 95, and a void ranges at 20 to 40 and 60 to 90. One of the ways that I like to memorize this information is there is a 5 in each one of your first sections. So you have a 105 and a 105 followed by a 95 and a 95, and that kind of sets up your expectation. The other thing that's important to remember is each one of these is going to be starting with a 1. So you have your 91 to 95, your 95 to 101, your 101 to 105, then your 105 to 107 for your 12 second transient. For NR, power on, we have a 101 to 107 transient, a continuous from 95 to 101, and then another transient from 91 to 95, and that's with power on. It's the same kind of thing as the other one where you have your 91 to 95, 95 to 101, and then your 101, it goes to 107 instead of to 105. So NR power on is on the easier side to remember. Power off, we're looking at 110 max, which is just a solo number, which makes it a little bit easier. And that's also the max of your transient range. So you have 110 to 105 for your transient, and then 105 to 90 for your norm. It's a pretty easy one to kind of equate out for memorization. All right, NG, we have a 12 second transient at 105 to 106 and a continuous range that just runs all the way from zero to 105. So that one's a little bit easier to remember just because it's just one less than your NP and your NR for power on. So 106 is your top end on that and then 105 is the, is the low end of the range for your 12 second transient. All right, then heading into torque limits. So your dual engine continuous is going to be different between under 80 knots and over 80 knots. For under 80 knots for dual engine, it is 0 to 120. Over 80 knots is 0 to 100. And then your 10 second transient is going to be 120 to 144 underneath. And that's going to be a 10 second limit and 100 to 144 over and that's also a 10 second limit. So anytime you're under 80, you're gonna have that 120, and anytime you're over 80, you're gonna have that 100. Your 10 second dual engine is always gonna be that 100 to 144 though. And then single engine, yours just zero to 135 continuous, and then 135 to 144 in 10 second. You'll see the kind of trend that 144 is going to be the top end that we can really take the engine to for torque, no matter what you're looking at. So for single engine and dual engine, the important thing is just to remember the initial ranges of if you're over 80 knots at 0 to 100 for dual engine, and then under 80 knots at 0 to 120, and then you already know that you're going to be going to 144 as your max for your 10 second limit. All right, engine oil pressure. So engine oil pressure, one of the easier ways to remember it is it is less of a starting point than your transmission pressure. So it's going to be 22 to 26 for your idle, followed by 26 to 100 for your normal range, and then followed by your five minute limit, which is at 100 to 120. Also, engine is the only one you're going to see actual timed limits on. You're going to have a five minute limit and a 30 minute limit. So once you get to engine oil temperature, you're looking at negative 20 to 135 continuous and then 135 to 150 with a 30 minute limit attached to it. So you're going to have a five minute limit for engine oil pressure and a 30 minute limit for engine oil temperature. And it's important to remember those just because there's not a lot of additional ways to kind of put those together. One of the other ways that you can also memorize them is anytime you're dealing with the engine, it's kind of a rule of threes and fives or ones, threes, and fives because you're always going to be multiples of five, which gives you your like 100s. And then your engine oil is going to be that one, three, five. So if you remember that E35 from studying on the Lakota, that can kind of do you some service here because you have three times five gives you 15, which gives you that 150 to 135. And then you have that one, three, five for the top end and then negative 20 as your bottom range. All right, TGT, we have a 12 second transient of 903 to 949. 
then our next group down is our two and a half minute continuous, which is 879 to 903. Then we have 846 to 879, then 793 to 846, and then 0 to 793. One of the ways you can kind of remember this one is since it's just a straight shot through with an additional limit on the side is just 949, 903, 879, 846, 793, and 0. And then we have a starter limitation at 851 for startup. TGT is definitely one of the ones that's harder to memorize. It also has a lot of different ranges since you're looking at a 30 minute limit from 793 to 846, a 10 minute limit from 846 to 879, then you have your start abort at 851, and then a two and a half minute limit at 879 to 903, and a 12 second transient from 903 to 949. All right, transmission pressure. So transmission pressure, you have an idle at 20 to 30, which is starting lower and going higher than your engine oil pressure, which is how I kind of start that off with that. So instead of your 22 to 26, you're looking at 20 to 30, which is a whole nice even 10 followed by 30 to 65, followed by 45 to 60, 65 to 130. And for transmission pressure, you're not gonna have a timed limit. It is precautionary at 65 to 130, steady state at 45 to 60, normal at 30 to 65, idle at 20 to 30, and then we once you get into changing out for degrees nose up, you can have a little bit of a differential here. So you'll find that nose up, the easy way to remember it is 15 degrees nose up will give you 10 to 15 PSI. Easy to remember, literally has a number right in it. And then if you multiply by three, 10 degrees nose up gives you 30 to 35. So that's kind of how I try and memorize those. Nose up attitude, six degrees, can create flux for up to 30 minutes in the transmission pressure. So that's just an additional thing to keep in mind in case you do wind up going into a nose up attitude and need to change what you're looking at or recognize that what you're looking at has changed and that may be why. All right, transmission oil temperature. We have a precautionary at 105 to 140 and that's not time limited. It's just 105 to 140. Transmission oil temperature is, lim is in a precautionary range and then continuous from negative 20 to 105. Backup pump in hot weather with the rotors, or sorry, <clears throat> backup pump in hot weather with the rotor static, 33 to 38 degrees. You have a time limit of 24 minutes with a cool down of 72 minutes. It's kind of easy to remember because you just multiply by three. And then from 39 to 52 degrees, you have a 16 minute limit with a 48 minute cool down associated. So the easy way to look at your backup pump is you're just going to be multiplying that 1, 6 times 3 to get your 4, 8, and that 2, 4 times 3 to get your 72. And that's just the 33 to 38, your initial range, then 39 to 52, your secondary range. So the hotter you, the hotter you get, the less time you can run it for, for. So you're subtracting 8 off of it, and then you're adding in 24 minutes of reduction in the time that you need to have it off, just based on that temperature differential. For your starter in hot weather, if you're underneath 15 degrees Celsius, you have two starts available with a three minute rest, then two starts available with a 30 minute rest. From 15 degrees Celsius to 52 degrees Celsius, you have two starts, then a 30 minute rest, and then any additional starts after that initial set of two or two, you have a 30 minute rest that is required between starts. Sloped landing limits, we're looking at a nose down of six degree max and then all around 15 degrees and then minus two degrees for every five knots of wind that you're currently in as well as a 15 knot max tailwind for slope operations. The way that I've always heard this say, said is just six down, 15 all around, two, two for every five, don't exceed 15. So that one's actually on the easier side to memorize, especially compared to other aircraft slope limits. All right, landing gear. So I break this down into level landing and sloped landing. I feel like it's easier to remember it that way just because breaking it apart into more sections makes it harder to remember. So just level landing, less than 16.8K is 540 feet per minute. Over 16.8K is 300 feet per minute. Sloped landing, less than 16.8K is 300, and then over 16.8K is 180. One of the other ways, 
Actually, I just realized I have a mistake here. That is 360. And I was going to specifically say that because you can basically multiply across. So your level landing is 540 if you're less than 16.8k and 360 if you're over 16.8k. Also, your over 16.8k at 360 is double the over 16.8k for sloped landing. So that's one way to remember it. And then almost double your less than 16.8k between the 300 and the 540. So things like that can just help you memorize it. All right, bank ankle limits. So if you have a primary servo one or two caution on, there's a 30 degree limit in your bank angle in effect. That one's pretty straightforward, so we're not gonna dig into that too deep. Windshield anti-ice. You really don't wanna turn that on if it's over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It can actually crack or damage or discolor the window. That's 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 80.6 if you wanna be overly precise. But I think that as long as you get the gist of it, everyone will be all right with that. All right, high speed yaw. We want to ensure that we're avoiding abrupt pedal turns over 80 knots. So that's a pretty easy one to remember. There's lots of things that are 80 knot limitations on this aircraft. APU in the hot weather. We have rotor on at or above 43 degrees Celsius for a 30 minute limit. And then rotor off underneath 51 degrees Celsius for an unlimited amount of time. So it's just important to remember that 43 degrees Celsius, you're going to have that 30 minute limit if your rotor is on. Prohibit maneuvers, hovering turns over 30 degrees per second, intentional maneuvers beyond plus or minus 30 degrees attitude pitch or 60 degrees roll, throttle chopping, also known as slamming your PCLs to idle or off in flight is prohibited. Rearward ground taxi is prohibited. We really should just have rear view cameras, but we don't. So rearward ground taxi prohibited. Landing and searchlight limits. So your landing light is a little bit more rigid than your searchlight because your searchlight has a lot more mechanics to it. So landing light, you have to have it extended by 130 knots and then you don't want to exceed 180 knots with the landing light extended. Searchlight, you need to extend it by 100 knots, so 30 knots less and same limit of 180 knots once it is extended. All right, rotor brake. So the max rotor speed for emergency use, or NR, is 76%. In a true emergency, that's probably not going to be a huge issue, but 76% is a pretty quick ramp down from when you put everything to off. So as soon as you hit that 76%, you can apply the rotor brake appropriately for an emergency stop. And then your routine daily stop, you're going to be under 40% NR and applying approximately 150 to 180 PSI max. And minimum pressure for a start with the rotor brake engaged is going to be 450 PSI to a max of 690 PSI. At idle, there is no time limit for how long the rotor brake can be applied, and that's single or dual engine. Auto rotation airspeed max. If you're under 16.8K, it's going to be 150 knots, and if you're over 16.8K, it's going to be 130 knots. All right, airspeed limits. So this is one of the harder ones to memorize just because there's a lot in each section. But at the top end, we have 193 knots. That is our true do not exceed for the aircraft. Equates out to 222 miles per hour, just in case you're curious. So 222 miles per hour, 120, 193 knots are max airspeed. 180 knots if you have the landing light and or the searchlight extended. 170 knots if you have one hydraulic pump or one SAS inoperative, or you have a gunner window open. 150 knots for max auto rotation under 16.8 K weight, two hydraulic pumps inoperative VMC or two SAS inoperative VMC. 145 knots with the cabin doors open. 140 knots with two hydraulic pumps inoperable in IMC condition, and that's two SAS in IMC as well. So you lose 10 knots off of your 150 if you have two hydraulic pumps in IMC. Sling load weight under 8K. So if you have a lighter side sling load at 8K or less, you can fly it up to 140 knots. Single engine inoperative airspeed max is 130. And then the max auto rotation for over 16.8K weight is 130 knots. So you have your max auto rotation over, or sorry, under at 150 and then under at 130. 
So you got you lose 20 knots of airspeed on your max auto rotation, depending on if you're light or heavy. Auto rotation with stabilator failure, max airspeed of 120, and then over 8k sling load. So you're really pushing the limits there. You're at a max airspeed of 120. Max glide distance with the clean configuration is going to be at 110. And then searchlights extended by 100. And max glide distance with a high drag configuration is also going to be at 100. So you have you lose 10 knots of potential airspeed if you're in a high drag configuration and you're going for max glide distance. Recommended auto rotation speed is 80 knots. Max ground speed for roll on landing is going to be 60 knots. Max side and rear hover speed, max wind velocity for start and stop is 45. And then at 40, you have stay full down manual if you're at less than 40. And then greater than 40, it's going to be stayed to zero in manual mode. So your initiation of changes to your stabilators if you go under or over 40, and that's going to be to zero degrees if you're above and full down if you're under. And then for 35 knots, we have side rear word movement for sling loads. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave that there for now, and we're going to break into all of the different mnemonics and memorization items after this.